So you'd be surprised at just how dirty the inside of your keyboard can get, okay? And we're talking dead skin, we're talking other things, and if you haven't been cleaning your computer keyboard this way, well then, uh, that's nasty, baby. It's your main man, Mighty Albert, and we have once again a fabulous episode here on the Mighty Albert channel. If this is your first time on the channel, please don't be afraid to smash the crap out of that subscribe button, smash the crap out of that like button, and if you don't like the video, smash the crap out of that dislike button, okay? I like the feedback, but with that out of the way, let's get into what you are here for, okay? This video topic, we are going to be going over how to properly maintain and maintain maintenance and if those are two of the same words I don't know why I said them but I said them but we're gonna go over exactly how to take care of your keyboard the right way okay I'm not talking about doing a little wipeage on the top of it doing a little sprayage over it no we're gonna be taking apart every key one at a time polishing up that bad boy what to do what not to do and what to look out for okay because each keyboard may or may not be a little different from each other and I want to warn you guys and show you the right way to do it to avoid you potentially damaging your keyboard and with how expensive these mechanical gaming keyboards can be you don't want to damage these things so for today's video I'm going to be working on my Corsair K70 wide edition keyboard it's a beautiful keyboard and we're just gonna do an in-depth teardown of this thing but I'm also gonna be showing you exactly how to open up a razor blade chroma mercury edition now as you could tell I love the style and the sleekness of the white keyboards from both razor and Corsair but I really prefer my Corsair keyboard over the razor one as of right now it's just a little less tactile and a little less annoying honestly it's not like that really big <laughs> you know it's just a smooth sounding keyboard and it still has that nice mechanical tactile feel without all the noise and let me tell you when you're in a house full of kids and a wife that wants to sleep at night yes it matters now the reason why I'm going to show you how to tear down the black widow chroma keyboard is because it's designed and the keys are set down just a little different and if you just pull up on that sucker there's a good chance you're gonna break it not like I have any experience doing that myself but with that out of the way guys let's just jump right in to the footage of me tearing it down and I'm gonna go over everything I'm doing step by step and you can follow along at home or just pause the video and catch up when you can all right with that being said let's get right into it so jumping right in guys you can see that I'm working from the right side of my keyboard and I'm separating them by section so that I know exactly where these keys are on the keyboard and I know which part of the keyboard I'm going to be working on when I assemble it at the end trust me you're gonna want to do this so now you see that I grab a plastic spudger because it actually helps with just giving it a little bit of leverage to pop these bad boys out and let me tell you if you don't have a plastic spudger like this you could use something simple like a little plastic spoon um, if you have something like that laying around the house you could just use it and it gives it just enough leverage to pop these things out now the reason why you're gonna want to separate these by section is because it makes it so much easier to put everything back when you're done washing the keys and let me tell you something I've done this so many times where I just grab all the keys and I just plop them into a big old bucket with the solution that I'm gonna be showing you and it's it's a nightmare dude because you got two enter keys you got three enter keys some keyboards have two shift keys it, it could just get really confusing knowing what is what but that's that right at the end right there so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of a can of compressed air just to blow any hair any crumbs that may have fallen inside of the keys at any point in time and let me tell you something it's actually I'm actually pretty surprised at how it not dirty it was underneath it but then I just grab a fiber cloth and then I'll just wipe it down there's no solution on it it's just it's just something nice fiber cloths always 
to me anyway, seemed to be able to pick up dirt pretty well without having anything on it. But alas, I do have to go and grab a little bit of 91% isopropyl alcohol because I do have some smudges on my keyboard that are annoying the crap out of me. And there's nothing a little bit of isopropyl alcohol can't take care of. Now I do wanna warn you, if your computer keyboard has like a nice finish on it, like like an acrylic finish or something like that, you may wanna refrain from using isopropyl alcohol because for whatever reason, I mean, not for whatever reason, but it, it just, it is how it is. Finishes and isopropyl alcohol don't mix well together. So refrain from using an abrasive cleaner like alcohol on anything with a finish, okay? Now, I'm just using a little bit and I'm just kind of going through the sides, anywhere I could fit this rag in, just to making sure, just making sure that I get all the dust and little tiny particles that may be getting in between any of the keys. And it does a really good job, you know, less is more. And I'm just inspecting every ounce of it because, you know, you wanna clean underneath the carpet one time. You don't wanna have to go back under for any type of reason. Once you put those keys back, you don't wanna see a little piece of hair or anything like that underneath it. And then I'll just give it a little shake at the end just to make sure everything is dusted out properly. But looking at that, it looks pretty darn good if, you, if, if I say so myself. So with that being said, now we're going to move on to washing the keys. So as you can see, I set my microfiber cloth down on the table, just, you know, flat out like that. And I have my keys separated in a bowl of really warm water with some antibacterial soap. That's it. I believe in this video, I used just regular hand soap that I have in my bathroom that, you know, is good at killing germs. You know, something that's more on the natural side. You don't really want anything evasive. Dawn will work just fine. Just a drop or two of Dawn. And you're just going to want to let that sit for about 15 minutes and then you're gonna go and get started by just polishing up these keys one at a time and Yeah, it might take you a little while to do one at a time what I'm doing But that's the point right you want to make sure that these things are nice and clean and dry And then you could just set them down right there on your workstation and I suggest you know listening to music listening to Netflix or you know watching Netflix or something because it's gonna take you a little while it took me about 20 minutes to do this and you just take your time you watch a good show and you know trust me it's gonna be worth it you're gonna notice your keys especially if you have a white keyboard like me they're gonna look shinier they're gonna smell nice and let me tell you something if you were sick like I was the past week and you're gaming on your computer because you know you're up late you can't sleep so what else is there to do when you're up late and, and, and you're sick is that's game right so you want to make sure you clean these things especially with covid running around you don't want to catch that again so just clean your keyboard and do it the right way okay because trust me you're gonna notice a difference and now after they're all nice and clean, you just take your time, grab up a diagram. You can get a diagram online of your keyboard layout or even with your integrated software for your keyboard and boom, there it is. All nice and put together and it's just a labor of love. And now I wanna clean my mouse because my mouse is just as dirty. You know, my hands were on it when I was sick gaming and I'm gonna grab my LCD cleaner and I use this because it's not an invasive cleaner, it's not abrasive or anything like that, and my, my mouse has a finish on it, so I won't be using alcohol on it, but I'll just take the LCD cleaner, and I'll just wipe it down. And it's amazing what just a little bit of LCD cleaner can do for something like this, and, and it's a good, nice cleaner, and it, it gets rid of the germs that you need it to get rid of, and it works out fabulous. And you're gonna see just exactly how great just a microfiber cloth works with just a little bit of spray. Watch. Look at that. Look at how shiny that mouse came out. And now you're good to go. So I just really quickly also wanna go over what I use for the surface of my desk because I have this really awesome spray that I want to share with you guys. It's the seventh generation disinfecting spray. It's a multi-surface cleaner and it's like, like I said, it's more on the natural side of things and it's really good for just disinfecting surfaces that, you know, you don't want any crap like bacteria or anything 
in your place of you know leisure or even workstation really and it leaves just a really nice shine on the table and the reason why i like to use more of a natural cleaner is because you know i'm not using real wood this tabletop isn't real wood it's you know it's it's compressed wood and you know you just want to take care of the things that you got and it's a really nice very very gentle cleaner and it works and it smells pretty good in my opinion i like the way it smells and you can buy this on amazon it's sweet and it has like a nice citrus smell to it and i even use it on a lot of other things too i use it on you know the surface of you know my where i rest my wrist on my my keyboard wipe that down every once in a while you could you're, you know you could use them on your controllers and they're just really nice they're they're a very gentle cleaner like i said and they're great for electronics you know as long as you keep them away from like things of like you know the pcb and stuff like that if you're just talking about surfaces like the plastic part of your controllers or your mouse you, this is the way to go man I, I totally recommend this for sure look it up man this thing is sweet or i'll you know what i'll drop a link in the description below and you can check it out for yourself yeah not sponsored so on the Black Widow Chroma keyboards for Razer, okay, you're gonna notice that when you lift up the bigger keys, okay, and I'm not talking about like the control keys, I'm more talking towards like the shift, the enter key, the space bar, keys like that, even the zero on the number pad or the enter or the plus sign, there's a metal bar that connects to these little plastic tabs that you wanna make sure that when you pop these up, Okay, you're going to want to pop them up and then with your middle fingers or whatever, even if you have like a little spudger, you can pop them right out of the little sockets. Now, it's going to be quite, there's going to be a lot of tension on that and I, you know, don't worry about it. Okay, all you got to do is just give it a little bit of a push. You know, if, if you're not feeling too comfortable, I wouldn't push to the point where it, it feels uncomfortable, but you're gonna need to give it some force to pop them out of the tabs. And then when you go back to put it back into place, you're gonna wanna snap that metal bar right back into those little two tabs and then set your key down on the Cherry MX switch or whichever switch you know your keyboard comes with so i hope that this video was helpful guys okay and it's really important to clean your keyboard not just because of achy things right because you know just cleaning your keyboard in intervals of like two to three months at a time can really sustain and upkeep the life of your keyboard right you know you don't want anything getting caught into those mx switches and you know things like hair crumbs whatever else may fall into it. it you know you'd be surprised what falls into those things maybe a little snap right there blah, 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 blah. Ugh, that's disgusting but anyway man anything could get caught in these things and the most important thing is to preserve the life of your equipment right because this stuff is expensive right thank you guys for watching this video if you liked it give it a thumbs up it helps out so much and if you don't like it give it a thumbs down and leave a comment and let me know what i could do better but with that being said guys Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you in next week's video. Peace!